Hey everybody, thank you for coming back to Stars of the Diamond. My name is Rhett, and um, this last weekend I actually had the opportunity to do a local to my area card show. And uh, I set up as a dealer, and it was really fun. I hadn't done a card show for a while since uh, I think the National a few years ago. And uh, it was fun. Uh, it was fun to connect with other people, and I wanted to kind of make a video because I was able to make a trade. Um, with someone for some pretty decent items. I had a basketball item they wanted and uh, they traded me for some pretty quality items for it and um, I got some other pickups as well. But uh, before I get into kind of the bigger item that I got in at the show, um, I kind of wanted to go over some of the more, uh, the minor items that I got, some of which I'm pretty excited about. So the first thing we got ourselves a uh, Julius Irving rookie and at first glance, it looks pretty nice, but this one has some pretty pretty bad condition issues. It looks like it has some a little bit of warping and uh, some creasing going across the card here. But, uh, and some slight discoloration on the back. So, uh, pretty low grade Julius Irving, but the price was right. So, you can never have too many uh, rookie cards of some of the better athletes of all time. Um, the other ones that I, the other two items, kind of single items that I got that I'm pretty excited about were two uh, 1948 Leaf football cards. Now, upon first glance, they're pretty nice items, but um, what you might not notice is that both Bob Waterfield and Kenny Washington normally have their name written in black on the bottom. And so these two having the white names on the bottom are pretty tough to find. And the Waterfield Rookie is one of the better items in the set. Um, and so that one, I don't even know when the last time I saw a white name Waterfield go up for sale. This one obviously has a little bit of condition issues and everything, but you kind of find them how you can find them. But uh, I was pretty excited about that one. But a guy that not as many people know about is, uh, is Kenny Washington. So um, we all know Jackie Robinson. Um, he broke the color barrier in baseball in 1947, but what many don't, don't know is that, um, one of his fellow alumni from UCLA was Kenny Washington. They both played football there as well, but Kenny Washington broke the color barrier in football a few years before Jackie Robinson did. And, uh, so all the stuff that Jackie Robinson went through, Kenny Washington went through earlier with very, very little fanfare. And his name is almost all but forgotten in based in football world this or even in the sporting world for that matter. So I love me some Kenny Washington. I think he's super duper underappreciated for who he is. And finding his uh his 48 leaf card with the name in white, I will take that all day long. Um just a cool, cool dude. I think he broke the color barrier in the NFL in 1945, but I also think he played in the Pacific Coast League football earlier than that as well. And he was a UCLA guy along with Jackie Robinson, different years, but um, pretty cool. Actually the most excited about that than anything else, but I did get some items that have more value to them. Um, pretty, pretty exciting little find was a nice group of 1972 tops football high numbers and these are really really clean cards as you can kind of see in our holder here we got a little fuzzball there so i'll kind of take out this uh willie brown just to kind of show you and this is the this is from a vintage collection you can tell just from these old sheets sometimes those old sheets will actually damage the cards these ones don't appear to have any problems on them or anything but as you can kind of see on the corner here, very, very little, if any, wear on that card. Well centered, yeah, pretty nice, pretty nice item. And I think we were able to get about 40 or 45 cards from the high numbers. Got a, two of the all pros, Willie Lanier, Willie Brown. Some of the bigger names, Winston Hill. Uh, Preston Pearson there, the running back for the Steelers. Uh, Earl Morrill, the quarterback up there. Tommy Nobis. Um, let's see. Emerson Boozer. And again, other than some centering issues on some of these cards, 
they're all really clean. I mean, just straight of oh, Mercury Morris is pretty cool. Just clean, clean cards. So super excited about that. Uh, Jim Marshall, wrong way, Jim Marshall. Dick LeBeau, a longtime coach. Tom Mack, Larry Brown down here. And we have the last guy in the set, Ken Willard, a little off center there on that one. But we did get, those were the kind of lesser guys. And we did get some stars in here as well. And I had taken those out and put them in some holders. So we here we have George Blanda action. Again, really clean. Just no creases on that card at all. Uh, Len Dawson in action. Off center top to bottom. Pretty typical tops cut there. Little roughness to the edge, but that's how they came. Steve Spurrier rookie action. Again, just a clean card and just vintage tops edges. So, I mean, a lot of times you think, oh, there's a little bit of wear to that, but that's just how that came. So these are pretty much pack fresh. Uh, Dick Butkus action. Just taking somebody out, Dick Butkus is. That's kind of what he did. We had our Alan Page as well. And again, just a pretty typical tops cut. Just really, really clean. Super excited about these cards. Just because of the, the condition of them. Checklist is uh, off center, top to bottom, and left to right, but clean still. And then our two uh, kind of big cards. We did get the, uh, the Namath in action. A little OC top to bottom. Side to side. Eh, pretty good there. Top to bottom a little bit. Maybe 65, 35, 70, 30, something like that. And our Steve Spurrier rookie. And that one actually is centered pretty darn nicely. So, again, nice corners on that card. Now that is a clean card. And uh, not many uh, Steve Spurrier cards were, were made. Obviously one of the better college coaches of all time. Um, so that was sort of our non... Or, uh, you know... Basically, I got a 1963 Tops set, and uh, I think the whole set, this was my big item that I got in at the show. Um, I was able to trade this for a basketball item that I had. I actually had two of the basketball item. It wasn't something that was really working for my collection, so um, I was able to find a guy that really wanted the basketball item, and he had baseball, so I am super excited about it. But it is an entire 1963 top set that was, but it was missing one card. And everyone's thinking, oh, it's probably missing the, the rose. No, it was missing the Stargell. So the Stargell rookie is the only card that's missing out of this set. And uh, I did take out some of the better cards over here, but I kind of wanted to just like look at this set in C2. Again, they, these are in the old plastics. They'll be removed just to kind of preserve the cards, but it doesn't appear like there is any um, damage to the actual cards from the holders. If you get these old style sheets, you do want to remove the cards from them just so that they don't damage the cards. I'm gonna try it. All right, well, I'm back. I placed a little book behind the, the album so that we could kind of see it a little bit better. But uh, yeah, so uh, really excited. The 1963 set is one of my favorites. It's just so colorful. And these cards seemed pretty clean. There's a variation in condition on them. But for the most part, just kind of taking a card out at random here. You know, a little bit of honest wear on the corners. But it seems clean. So that's kind of the nobody there. Let's check out our... Batting leaders with mantle up here. A little bit of a wear to that. Some corner wear. Yeah, just, I mean, pretty pretty mid to slightly higher grade, you know, set, I think, overall. So we're just going to kind of go through and look at some of these cards. Um as a set, and then we'll kind of get into sort of some of the better cards. There are, you know, this is an honest set. This is just a set that's been around for a long time. For example, this Ken Hubs, and this is, I think, the only card that I saw in here that had any damage. Ken Hubs, obviously the, uh, uh, you know, the second baseman for the Cubs that 
tragically passed away in an airplane accident outside of Provo, Utah. And uh, he normally is an error with the con with the uh, position missing on the front, but this person rode in second baseman down there. So just a old, you know, kid back in 1963 wanting to make some consistency, decided to take it upon himself. But um, yeah, so we got some pretty cool guys. We're just gonna kind of go through here and read the names. We got Al Kaline down here. And uh, I'll probably just take out periodically a few of the cards just to kind of look at the condition overall. But uh, yeah, just some little fish eyes and stuff in the ink. But overall, nice X, X mint or so, you know, card there. No creasing, no wrinkling. Um, Tony Kubek, Ed Lopat, manager for the A's, Kurt Simmons. And it does look like we have the variations for those uh, early, the first series rookie cards that uh, instead of saying 1962 were later corrected to the 1963 I got Ray Culp and Jesse, Sammy Ellis, Jesse Gonder, John Boozer, Harvey Keen. So pretty cool. So we're just going to kind of go through. We got Casey Stengel and Gene Woodling down here for the 1963 Mets. The Angels. There's Hank's brother, Tommy. Billy Pierce. Got Elston Howard. So here's a, here's kind of a cool one that probably should have more value than it really does. Dave DeBusher, the uh, basketball Hall of Famer, was a pitcher for the White Sox, and that is him. And this is the tougher version of him where it's 1962. And then there's the corrected version over there as well. So predates his basketball cards by a bit and uh, kind of undervalued if you're asking me. Got Duke Snyder and Gil Hodges down here. We got Bobby Allison. We got the checklist down here as well. Marv Throneberry, Marvelous Marv. Bob Veal, Ron Hansen, Jim Gilliam at the top. Larry Jackson, he's from my neck of the woods. He's from, uh, I think, Boise, Idaho. That's where I'm at, is Boise. So yeah, he was a. Uh, local guy to us. Uh, Jim Umbrick tragically uh, had got cancer and passed away right after this uh, this set was made. And uh, so both versions of the second series checklist, the yellow on red and the red on yellow. Ron Fairley, Hoyt Wilhelm here at the top, Al Jackson, the uh, Pretty great, pretty decent rookie for the Mets. They had some hope for him. Bob Lillis. There's a Yaz at the top. And then maybe we'll just kind of pop them out and just do this. It's a little easier. That's a pretty nice Yaz off center, of course, but pretty nice. So I was pretty excited about the condition overall of this set. Uh, Frank Howard down here at the bottom, he was like six, six foot eight or something like crazy like that. Um, Dick Grote. Matty Alou, Robin Roberts up there, Dick Hauser, Bob Uecker. Uh, Richie Ashburn for the Mets, the end of his twilight of his career for sure. Earl Averill Jr. down here. So here's our World Series cards. We've got Whitey Ford over here. Got Roger Maris sparking a Yankees rally. Of course, that's a little OC. Tom Tresh, Tom Hiller, Billy Pierce, and the Yanks celebrate. But overall, pretty, I mean, as far as 63s go, this is, I mean, a very condition sensitive set just due to the coloration at those bottom two borders. So it is a little bit tougher to find. And, um, you know, on this page, we did get a Tommy Harper you know, rookie down here, as well as um, a Walter Alston manager, uh, Pirates team off center on that one. Pretty cool. Joe Torrey's older brother, Frank Torrey, Don Larson, there's an early Jim Cott, Jim Fragosi, Twins team. Up here, we've got second year, kind of interesting that 
1962, Gaylord Perry had his own card. And in 1963, he was still considered a rookie and was just thrown it with some other guys. So with Tommy Sisk and a few other guys. And so that's not a Gaylord Perry rookie, even though he is on one of those rookie cards. So he kind of... But uh, Gaylord Perry had a, a bit of a slow start to his career. You know, like some of those bonus babies from the 50s, like uh, Sandy Koufax and Harmon Killebrew and the like. He well, he didn't start off just kind of lighting it on fire right at the beginning. So it took him a few years to kind of find his legs and eventually kind of make it work into a Hall of Fame career. But it didn't look like it was going that way at the beginning. Uh, Vern Law down here. One of the guys from history and baseball that that really, really had a struggle getting started if you've never looked at his career, is Dazzy Vance, the Hall of Famer from the, the 20s and 30s. But he um, he played for a long time, toiled in the minor leagues for years before finally kind of getting a, a chance to, to make it, be on a team, finally put it together, and obviously put it together enough to become a Hall of Famer. But uh, Mini Minoso over here. But a lot of people don't realize how much of a struggle it was for Dazzy Vance and some of those other guys to get going. Because, uh, I mean, Sandy Koufax, for example, was obviously one of the best, you know, pitchers. Um, given, you know, one game, any pitcher from any era, you know, you got to win it. He's on the short list every single time. But his career really had a funny look to it. And uh, the first five or six years, he was pretty, pretty terrible, actually. But the final five or six years of his career are as good as any five or six years for any pitcher ever. But uh, we got a Luis Aparicio up there at the top. Pretty nice. Again, just a, just a pretty clean, you know, X plus, X mint card or so, I would imagine. Ron Herbal. Hobie Landreth. Bob Skinner. Got Jim Bunning here. So it's the... Tigers pitching staff there. Uh, Chuck Cotier. Jim Mudkant Grant. Joe Jay. And uh, for me personally, I kind of like the the way the 63s are set up. It's similar to 1960, how they have this sort of colorized picture. In 60s, there's horizontal ones on the side, and then you have a regular picture on the other side. But in 63, obviously, they have this little inset picture. I honestly kind of wish that they had just made this whole set like they make the, they made the managers with just the logos down on the bottom. I don't know. I just kind of I I kind of love that look to them a little bit more almost than I like the other cards. I just think it makes for a cleaner, better looking card. But I don't know. Maybe if they made them that way, I'd get sick of it. So uh, Rocky Colavito down here at the bottom. Harvey Haddix. Hard luck. Perfect game guy there. Gil Hodges, uh, first baseman for the Mets on this page. Again, just a re that one's a really clean card. I mean, maybe the slightest touches of wear. Not too bad on the centering, but it is a little bit off. Yeah, I mean, just very, very minimal wear on that card. And it doesn't look like there's any creases. A little bit tough to see. Oh, here's the Yankees team. That's always a popular one as well. OC to the top. Uh, 63 rookies here, Deacon Jones, Len Gabrielson, no one's super great there, Alvin Dark, and again, here's one of those manager cards with just, with just the logo, uh, Ron Santo over here, Jim Gentile, Johnny Logan, Veda Pinson, Johnny Logan, there's Felipe Alou, probably the best of the Alou brothers, I'd imagine, but Maddie was pretty darn good too. Eddie Matthews. So the Eddie Matthews here looks like it has a little bit more wear. This may have been a card that was added by the original collector later. And so, I mean, this is pretty typical. When you find 63 cards in the wild, I feel like this is kind of the condition you find them in with pretty pretty decent wear on the top bottom borders. The top borders can have that same amount, a little ding of you know, indentation on the card. But the top borders can have the same amount of wear. It just doesn't show as much as those bottom kind of colored borders. So pretty, pretty nice little group there. But that Matthews is definitely a slightly lower grade. Uh, Dick Farrell, Dick Sisler, Dick, Dave Sisler. 
and Dick Sturt. Roy Seavers, Bill Rigney, Don Rudolph, famously married to Patty Wagon, the uh, burlesque dancer. If you didn't know that. Bill White, later become a, uh, a National League official. Uh, rookie Stars. Dave Moorhead might be the star on that one. Whitey Herzog over here. We'll go through these a little bit quicker so it's not such a long thing. Here's a short-lived Houston Colt 45s. Um, team card, we've got Earl Beatty and Elston Howard. A nice Warren Spawn down here. We'll kind of check that one out a little bit closer. Not really nice on that Spawn. Centering's decent for 63s. Too bad it's not as centered as that Joe Gaines over there. That's a nice one. Centering, at least. And again, there's that. The managers. I just, I think I'd like them with the, with the logos better. But I'll stop bringing that up. So we got Vic Davalillo, um, Pete Ward, Bill Mazeroski, Chuck Hinton, oh, Dick Williams down here. Still a man, still a player at that point. L.A. Dodgers. Yeah, that one looks like it has a little bit more wear than some of those other cards. So it looks like some of these probably were added a little bit later. So just a bit more wear on that Dodgers team card. Johnny Pesky. You can tell that photo has been doctored quite a bit. We've got a Yogi Berra up there, which is kind of interesting. Catcher slash coach. Gene Woodling, we got our Brooks Robinson. That's a pretty good page, actually. Let's look at that. So the Barra has a little more wear than most of the cards here. And we've got our Brooksy over here. He's he's pretty nice. Centering's decent on that Brooks Robinson. Johnny Pesky looks like he's in front of a green screen. There's a Joe Torre early card there. That one is pretty clean. Vic Wirtz. And we're just going to start getting into a little bit like the high numbers here. Yeah, well, Billy Williams on that page. Jim Bunning down here. Well-centered card on that one. Uh, Cleet Boyer. Don Drysdale. We'll check out the Drysdale here. That one seemed like a nice card. Yeah, just a little touch down here on this corner. Centering is beautiful on that card. But yeah, if you find 63 cards that are well-centered... And in nice condition with little to no wear on the bottom edge. I mean, they just are beautiful cards. I can imagine when kids went to the store in 63. 62 is a great set and it has its own, you know, appeal to it, of course. But after the somewhat drab wood border of 1962, I can imagine in 63 when they went to go pick up that first pack of cards. Got Ken Boyer down here. And they saw that design. I'm sure the kids were just in love with it. So again, here's that. The manager for the Yankees there. Ralph Houck. Ernie Banks has a little bit more wear. You can see a little just kind of rub on the red there. I think that, was pro that could have even been like factory done. But there is some more wear on that card. Kind of partial to the orange color on some of the 63s. I don't know why. I just kind of, kind of like that. So here's uh, Ed Kirkpatrick, John Bateman, and uh, some other guys on that. Rookies. Got Tim McCarver there at the top. That's his second year. Boog Powell over here. It's kind of a cool one. And Jim Bouton and Frank Robinson. Let's check out our Frank Robinson. Again, I like the, for whatever reason, I kind of like the orange. Bring a little tiny bit of wear on that edge on Frank Robinson. Some corner wear. Centering's off to the bottom on him. The Boog Powell off to the side. And the Tim McCarver. That one's actually, yeah, it's decently centered. I'm not as big of a centering snob as some people are. Prefer them to be centered, but it's not the it's not a game changer for me. Howie Coplets. It's a good name. Bobby Richardson down here. This is kind of a decent little page here. Got a Bobby Richardson with that orange color. That one's actually pretty nice. Little little ding on the edge there, it looks like. We've got our Bob Gibson. 
Yeah, minimal wear on Gibson. Off center though. Giants team and our big three, Johnny Padres, John Drysdale, and Sandy Koufax. That one's centered nicely, but it has some color issues on the bottom border. Fred Hutchinson, I think he uh, obviously famously uh, was diagnosed with cancer and I believe passed away the following season. And uh, just a legendary guy in the Seattle area and the Hutchinson Cancer Institute is located up there. Uh, Lou Burdett, name misspelled. Smokey Burgess. So here we've got two versions of the 6 Series checklist, and I, I love that orange one, that orange 6 Series. That's kind of a cool one. I believe the orange one is the tougher one there. Norm Cash, Juan Marichal. The Juan Marichal is kind of the dog of the set. It's pretty, that's pretty rough. So I'm not sure if I end up just kind of keeping this set, I'll probably upgrade that Marichal so it doesn't stick out like a sore thumb. Got a pretty nice whitey forward down here, decently centered. You know, minimal corner wear on that card. Indians team, pretty nicely centered there. Danny Tartable's dad, Jose. Al Lopez. Wally Post. Del Crandall. Got rookie here. Okay, Bill Freehand rookie there. It's actually kind of a tough card. Tom Tresh. Rookie, I believe that's a single print as well. And uh, we've got our Lou Brock, and that is a clean Brock. That's just a nice looking car, a little OC. Looks like uh, maybe a little print line or something across it. That's a fan favorite, the New York Mets team. There's that Tom Trash. So here we're into, I believe, the the high numbers now. I think they start at, yeah, the Whitey Ford. So back here a few pages was the Whitey Ford. I think everything after that is considered a high number here. But this is a funny set where the highest of the high numbers actually aren't as tough as the second to the last series, I believe. So just a few more pages here and then we should be done. And then I'll show you the, the stars. So there's a Willie McCovey. It's kind of a kind of a cool one. And uh, I'm not sure what the deal is with tops with the Houston with the Colt 45s. I don't think they wanted to show the um, the gun. And so what ended up happening on their manager card is that they just had his name at the bottom. So that's sort of the oddball out in this set. And I'm definitely glad they didn't go with that look for all the cards because there's a lot of blank space down there. So I would have preferred to have had a logo, but I think there may have been an issue with not wanting to promote the vision of the gun or something like that. And obviously within the a couple years they would change from the Colt 45s to the Astros. The long rookies, a uh, nice little Harmon Killebrew. He's a tough one to find in this particular set. I believe he's a single print. There's a little print line across his face, but actually not a bad looking card there overall. Kurt Flood. Braves, really Sheldon looks like he's in worse condition than most cards. Cal McLish, and yeah, these pages have a slight sticky film to them, and yeah, we need to get these cards out ASAP. This is an old-time collection and an old-time album. There's Gary Peters in like his fourth year as a rookie. Uh, Orlando Cepeda. Nelly Fox down here with the ever-present jaw. The most handsome man in all of sports, in the history of sports, Mr. Don Mossy, has made a, an appearance for all of us. We all appreciate that. And then we get into some pretty decent little rookie card down here of Rusty Staub. And that one looks clean. Nice, minimal, minimal wear on the top edge there. 
and uh, centered all right pretty nice a little off to the right as far as the photo goes there but we'll take it Hal Reniff, Elmo Plasquette, Rookie, Tigers, and Duke Snyder there. It's a clean Duke, but it's off-center to the left. Johnny Blanchard, Ron Hunt, Rookie, Danny Murta. Kind of like the blue rookie card down here. I think that's just kind of a different look to it. Most of them are that yellow or kind of red in the background. Unfortunately, oh, that's, yeah, that's the Dave McNally. So that's a, actually a pretty good card. There's our Dave McNally rookie. That's a clean card, man. That is a nice looking card. And if it was a grader, I'd probably get that graded, but uh, it's not really the the game I play. And there's nothing wrong with it. Most people are graders. I just if it was if it's up to me, I'd rather spend that money on more cards than to get my cards graded. But if you're going to sell your cards, for sure, if you have questions about authenticity, for sure, they are they are what they are. And uh, that kind of ends us out. And I believe this Craig Anderson's kind of cool. It's just kind of in the back because it's actually part of that three-card advertising sheet. So this is an advertising card. So that's why that's kind of placed in the back there. So that is the set. And I'll just kind of leave it open here. And uh, then we will go over some of our star cards. So we'll go over, eh, we'll just kind of start here with these ones. So we ended up with our Ernie Banks, Hank Aaron, Power Plus. A little more cor corner wear to that bottom right, or bottom left, my left. Actually pretty clean uh, Tony Oliva rookie. And uh, I actually kind of wanted one of these. I think there's a there's a good chance that Tony Oliva makes it into the Hall of Fame at some point in the future. So that's a pretty cool Oliva and Ed Cranepool card. Bucks Blaster, um, somewhere on that. Um, obviously it has Clemente on, on that. That's our star guy there. And we've got our Mickey Mantle here with Tom Tresh and Bobby Richardson. What a lineup there, Stan, Willie Mays and Stan Musial. We've got our Roger Maris, off center. Corner's pretty decent though. Sandy Koufax. We'll save Mantle for the end. Roberto Clemente is nice. Just a little corner edge and a little centering issues. Mays is pretty decent. Hank Aaron recently passed away on us. We lost a great ambassador of the game with Hank Aaron. And uh, Stan Musial. I feel like Stan Musial cards are always off-center. Everyone I ever have is always off-center. And then finally, our mantle. Just uh, somewhere, um, you know, probably VGXX or something like that. That range doesn't look like there's any creases on it. But... Uh, Pretty nice card. And that's most of the set. Now, the original owner of the set had sent in the Pete Rose rookie to get graded. And so that one is the only card that is graded here. And that is graded a four. And it's a pretty nice looking four, actually. So there's a little bit of a print line across it. I think that might be a little bit of what kind of get, got us there. But, you know, some uh, that corner is pretty, pretty nubbed. Yeah, that corner is probably our, that but lower right corner is kind of our culprit as far as the grade. That along with little printing marks, that's an accurate grade. Pretty accurate for a four there. No wrinkles or creases, but can't mess with that. And you can't have too many Pete Rose rookies, hit king and everything. So anyways, just kind of wanted to feature some of my better pickups from the show. And again, I was able to trade this 63 top set for a basketball item that I had. And uh, I'm super excited because I'm not as big of a basketball guy as I am a, a baseball guy. So if I can trade some basketball for baseball all day long and every day, I will do that. But uh, anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed that little walkthrough uh, of the 63 top set. And uh, pretty excited about those 72 tops football cards. Those were pretty darn nice. 
as far as kind of condition goes. And uh, some of the better names, I think the biggest names in the high numbers. And again, out of everything that I got, the thing seems silly, but the thing I'm the most excited about is the Kenny Washington card. Just, uh, just a completely underappreciated and, you know, undervalued in every aspect of the word especially seeing what's happening with Jackie Robinson cards as far as price goes and everything. Kenny Washington is just one of those guys. And one of the things I think with Kenny Washington that hurt him is that um, I think it was George Hallis tried to sign him as early as 1940, but they just would not allow for integration to happen. And uh, so I think it was 45 when he finally got his chance and he was pretty banged up by then. And he was, he got pretty injured and his career was over by 48. He was good. He was a good player for the years that he played in the NFL, but he was, I think he only played three years in the NFL. So um, just not as much of a storybook ending, I suppose, like a Jackie Robinson where he goes on to a Hall of Fame career. But uh, Kenny Washington... Um, if you have any of his cards or anything like that, I will buy them all day long. But thank you guys so much for stopping by Stars of the Diamond. I really appreciate all the support that I've gotten. And, uh, you know, at some point I might start doing some giveaways and things like that. But I, I just love the community, you guys. Your comments are awesome. Keep them coming. And uh, I love interacting with, uh, with people that watch my videos. And if you have a video that you'd like me to, you know, to do, if there's a set that you'd like me to feature, by all means, let me know. Um, I have a little bit of everything, so um, I should have it. And uh, anyways, thank you so much for stopping by. Be sure to smash that like button. That's what brings my videos a little bit higher on the YouTube algorithm. So I really do appreciate that. And be sure to subscribe. Have your friends subscribe. Love you guys. Take care. As always around here, happy collecting.